we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh, the good times just begun What up Legacies, welcome back to my channel. Uh, please go ahead, comment, like, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell so you get updated on my next video. So today I wanted to show you guys how to make a iced cappuccino. Originally I was just going to do a how to make a like caramel latte, but that's a pretty basic drink. I'm sure there's a lot of videos already out there. And I know a lot of people know about a regular cappuccino, but a lot of people don't know about an iced cappuccino. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do like my own little twist on it. Uh, you'll see as I make it what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the steps of how to make it. Most importantly, what ingredients you're going to need and, and kind of just how to make that good froth. Make, Cause the froth is the most important thing about this about this drink. So most importantly, you're gonna need some espresso. I'm gonna go ahead and use Pete's coffee today. It's a, a dark roast espresso bean uh, with a bright tang, smooth crema with a touch of hazelnut. I kind of go back and forth between using Pete's coffee and the, the, light, uh, the blonde roast espresso from Starbucks. Uh, I actually like mixing the two, like doing half and half. Um, I just like the blend of the two. They're actually way different. Um, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that when you're grinding the beans. Uh, because, I mean, when they're roasting them, you know, they're naturally oily. Uh, the, I, I noticed the Starbucks blonde roast is a little more oily than this Pete's. And I like the way that the Pete's grinds better in my machine. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start explaining what other ingredients you need. You're also going to need your Tarani. Well, I like to use Tarani caramel sauce. I mean, honestly, like caramel sauce is where it's at. I know like Starbucks and some other mom and pop shops use a lot of syrups, but if you really want a rich flavored coffee beverage, you got to use the sauce. Um, I use sugar free and just a little backstory on why that is, is because uh, my mother's diabetic. So I grew up having a lot of low sugar free foods and I kind of just like continued that in my diet today. And I mean, I find that it's beneficial. I mean, less sugar intake is better for your body anyways. So I kind of just stuck around with that. And if I'm making my mom a drink, then I'm going to be using sugar free. So might as well just buy all sugar-free products. Okay, and then kind of going back to the espresso beans, you want to buy espresso beans as you're going to go ahead and use them. You want to make sure that they're staying as fresh as possible because once you open the bag, they're no longer airtight sealed. See this hole right here? So this this says it's freshest by august 9th 2021 and it was roasted on may 11th so usually when you buy some espresso beans you want you really want to use them as soon as you buy them as soon as as soon as you can you don't want to buy like bags and bags and just have them there stocked so i just have pizza espresso coming in from amazon on a one like one or two month basis I'm just like subscribed to just get like a like a monthly or bi-monthly ship shipment, depending on like how much I'm using and how frequently. So I like to put them in a glass. Anything that you put in glass is better. It helps preserve it better. So I'm going to go ahead. I like to put it in this glass container that I bought off of Amazon. So once you put the lid on, it's like airtight sealed. Right. 
and then I'll just like pour this out into the the my machine basket as I'm using them. So the machine that I'm using is the is the Breville Pro. I ended up buying it because I realized that it was like one of the better machines out there. It's like kind of like, I mean, Oprah said she uses it. So if Oprah says, Oprah, Oprah goes, right? Um, it's a Breville Pro. There's like the Breville Express, but I really wanted to use like one of the best uh, residential espresso machines. Like, the, of course you have your commercial ones. Uh, those are like, you know, really pricey. So. I thought this was like one of the more affordable ones. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do it, flip the camera around and just show you real quick like what it looks like, what my setup is, and kind of just walk you through the steps of making the beverage. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using the Breville Pro. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn it on. So these are, these are the pictures I use. So I love using Kavana Jade Citrus Mint Tea. I usually drink this in the morning or like during the midday and I'll like put some honey with this. This is like the dump basket. That's Ronnie, the cups. container for the espresso is filled I'm gonna go ahead and explain what are some of the tools that I'm gonna be using so most importantly you're gonna to want to use your your basket uh, there's different sizes of baskets this this basket that I have in here right now is used for two espresso shots but you also have your single and then if you're gonna be cleaning them then you're gonna to want to use the ones that are sealed at the bottom you use like these cleaning tablets and you would use those to clean you're going to want to use a whip a whip for sure especially if you're using sauce which is thicker in consistency you want to make sure you're using a whip a thermometer And then most importantly, you're gonna to wanna to be using a pitcher. The bigger the pitcher, the better for the froth. And I'll go over what types of milks you can use and why some work better than others. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, grab the basket. I'm gonna go ahead, place it in the canister right here. So with the Breville Pro, you can go ahead and you can adjust the grind amount. Um, right now I have it set for 15, and this is what I mean when you with the type of espresso bean that you're gonna use. Uh, when I'm Since I'm using Pete's, it's a little drier, and what I like about that is that it comes out smoother, it doesn't like spout out everywhere when it's grinding down. And I have it automatically uh, set at a timer for 11 seconds because it fills the basket and I don't want it to overfill and I don't want to waste espresso beans. So I'm going to go ahead, flip the camera around and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if you look here, I have the grind size set for 15 and I have the seconds set at 11 you can tell on the back. It says 13 in the front because that's generally the, the amount of seconds that you want to use. 
and then over here this is the grind dial so this is what I would use to adjust if I want a more coarse or more thin grind so here I have placed the basket since I already have it set to a double shot I'm gonna go ahead and just click it Okay, now that it's in there, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and take the canister out, place it here. I like to take this out for like any access, excess that falls off. I'll like tamper it in here real quick. Tap it, place it right here. Go ahead, place this. So when you place it in here, you wanna go ahead, place it in all the way up, and then you wanna turn it tight to the right, and you wanna make sure it locks. I'll have a brush usually around in case any excess that falls off the, the grind machine. I'll use it to like sweep into this basket. All right, now that we have grinded the espresso and that we have that inside, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push three pumps of the Tarani into here. Okay, now that that's placed in there, I'm gonna go ahead and put this underneath. Now that the Tarani caramel sauce is in here, I'm gonna go ahead and place it underneath. I'm gonna line it so it spouts out on both sides. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go ahead and press the double shot. The light doesn't shine on me. Okay, so usually I'll go ahead and let it kind of just drip for for a few seconds, make sure all the espresso comes out. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some ice and some whole milk. All right, so I went ahead and I grabbed some ice. Now that you have this out, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to whip it. Okay. All right, shout out to Starbucks for letting me take some of these cups home because to make this iced cappuccino i need to make sure i have the domes i didn't have any of those like i just have your regular like cups for like lattes or hot beverages so shout out to starbucks for helping me out with this one okay so because i am going to make a venti sized drink Usually venti size drinks have four espresso shots, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to use and make four espresso shots. So because I already had the condiments in here, 
I'm going to go ahead and pour them into this bigger pitcher for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process with the basket. I'm going to go ahead and pull two more shots and then I'll show you how to top off and then I'll show you how to top off the drink. So once you once you're done with the espresso, you're going to go ahead, take this out and you're going to dump it into your dump bucket. You want to go ahead and grab a clean rag and then go ahead and wipe the inside of this out. So it'll look clean like that. Once it's clean, go ahead and place it back underneath where I showed you er earlier. And then we're going to let it automatically grind another two times. Yo la testigo Como son dos tres Sin estrés Muestra I'm like so addicted to coffee. It's like ridiculous. Like coffee is what makes my day. Um, I mean, everything with moderation, of course, is healthy, but I really got to like lower my caffeine intake. Okay, so when you tamper the espresso, technically, I believe it's 72 PSI of the amount of pressure you want to place so that it's well, well compacted inside the basket. Um, I may be wrong. Please double check on that, but pretty sure it's like 72 PSI. So I'm going to go ahead and place this back over here. Lock it. And then because I did put three pumps of the Tarani sauce in here earlier, I like my drink semi-sweet. It is sugar-free, so I like to think that I'm being healthy about it. <laughs> so I'm just going to place one more in here. So now that I went ahead and I placed it in there again, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let another two shots of espresso come out. And while that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting ice in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start explaining why the milk that I use has an impact on the amount of froth that you make. Okay. So basically, basically the amount of the type of milk that you use for froth is important because if you're using whole milk okay so whole milk is the easiest milk to froth if you use two percent it's a less less easier and if you're going to your substitutes like oat milk almond milk or coconut milk it's even harder so basically I'd like to drink whole milk already in general. If not, I'll go ahead and I like to use coconut milk as well if I'm like up for it. But today, because I am making an iced cappuccino, I wanna make sure that I go ahead and use some whole milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this whole milk right here. And I'm gonna start pouring this into the biggest pitcher that I have. So basically when you're going to go ahead and froth milk, you want to use a big pitch, a big pitcher because the bigger the pitcher, the easier it is to make some good froth and make sure that it rises to the very top. And because we are making a venti drink, you want to make sure that you have enough froth to fill this up entirely. 
Okay, now that this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and whip this. And then I'm gonna pour it into the pitcher I was using earlier. Okay, so now we have all four espresso shots and our condiments with the caramel sugar-free tirani sauce. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the biggest pitcher and I'm gonna go ahead and fill it about a quarter filled. Okay, now that it's quarter now that it's a quarter filled, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to froth some bomb froth. Basically, this is your wand. Okay, so this is your wand and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna completely submerge the wand inside. Then we have the dial up here, which you're gonna turn to your left for, for steam. So because this is gonna get loud, I'm gonna go ahead and explain that you wanna have the wand completely submerged. You wanna introduce your thermometer. And then you want to go ahead and start breaking the surface. You want to go ahead and start breaking the surface. Looks like a lot of, I got a little grain of espresso in there. So I pretty much have it raised all the way to the top I'm gonna submerge it the wand all the way back in and with the thermometer you want to go ahead and make sure that you only steam it to 140 degrees Fahrenheit I did a little over so that's okay but basically Basically, 160 would be like considered, like 160, 170 would, con would be considered burning the milk. So I just stopped right before. Okay, so while I let that cool off because this is an iced beverage, because it, because it is an iced beverage, I'm gonna go ahead and start filling up the venti cup with ice. But because I was telling you earlier that I wanted to make my own kind of special drink, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and like rim the cup with Tarani sauce. Okay, so like technically like a cappuccino is just espresso and some steamed milk with some froth, but I do like my beverages a little sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start filling this cup up with ice. Usually when you're making a beverage, if you're making a hot drink, you always put in the espresso first, but if you're gonna, unless it's like an overpour, but if you're gonna go ahead and make an ice drink, then you'll always pour the milk in first. So now that I have the milk, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour it like probably a quarter of the cup filled. All right, that's good. So now, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a spoon and I'm gonna scoop the froth into the cup. We've been on and off again and again.
I don't know which way we're going, no control You push me, then you pull me back in Don't know if I can decipher how your mind works Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead You see the froth, how it rose up pretty good I'm gonna go ahead, tap this a few times you Give me a sign I got a big spoon, so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop the froth out. So it should look really nice and frothy like this. Alright, now that I filled the entire drink with froth, I'm going to go ahead and place the dome on top. So now that the dome is placed, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the picture I had earlier with four shots with the caramel sauce. I'm going to go ahead and pour it through this hole right here, and it's going to rise up. So this is your iced cappuccino with the froth on top, yum. <laughs> so, I mean, this is why I wanted to make this drink because it's very non-traditional. A lot of people don't know that you can get a cappuccino that's iced. So I'm gonna go ahead, flip the camera around and show you another view from it. Right? Look at that froth. Look at that rich froth. How it just rose to the top like this, like, awesome volcano. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get the straw. I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna let you know what it tastes like. Place that in there. This is this is freaking ball. <laughs> All right, with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to finish cleaning up. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Please go ahead, comment, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think about this drink. Is this something that you guys could see yourself making at home? And if so, or if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I love coffee. I'm a coffee fanatic. And actually, if em Emma Chamberlain is out there watching this video, like this is dedi in dedication to you because you're a coffee fanatic and I love when you make your coffee or your like morning routine videos. This is like part of my morning routine actually as well. But if you look at that time back there, it's 11, 19 p.m. And this is kind of like the only time I had to shoot this video. So I'm actually drinking coffee late at night, but it's well worth it. And it's for you, my legacies. So please keep that in mind. <laughs> I am more than willing to go out of my way to shoot some good content for you guys because you guys are awesome. I love you guys. And everyone knows that if you're in recovery, like meetings and coffee go hand in hand. Always remember everything with moderation. And if you can do that, then do anything. I love you guys.
Peace out. Hyper as fuck now or what? <laughs> So I just bounce off walls now or what? <laughs> Cut. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and clean up guys. I love you. Peace out. I should, maybe I shouldn't have been drinking all that caffeine. <laughs> it's like already gone. <laughs> Delicious. So I drank that in like two minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna be up for a while. I'll get some stuff productive, probably some editing, because everyone knows that editing and YouTubers, that's probably what consumes most of your time, and I edit all my videos, so, yeah, I'm just, like, multi-talented like that. <laughs> I was just the architect of an ice cappuccino with heavenly caramel drizzle which was ecstasy to my mouth like literally i cannot recommend anymore why this drink is my favorite but it's also the most complicated to make and it's kind of time consuming but it's well worth it so yeah just wake up like 10 minutes earlier and like you're good right <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,